Let me tell you a couple of things up front. This talk is really not just about the thyroid, but I will wrap up early because there's a disproportionate large number of patients in here who have COPD, and there are a fair number of patients with thyroid, and we'll talk a little bit about this. My, my talk is actually on lots of endocrine aspects of pulmonary hypertension, okay? So we have, name the lung diseases we have in this room. We have COPD, we have fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis. We have anybody with lupus, asthma, asthma. okay. Bronchitis. Chronic bronchitis, all right. Pulmonary fibrosis, okay. Interstitial lung disease. Okay, ILD, all right. Okay, so all of those disorders have in common a couple of things, right? You get to them by different processes. Sometimes it's environmental smoke exposure, genetics, autoimmunity. But what happens in all of these lung diseases is that high blood pressure builds up in the lung, okay? High blood pressure builds up in the lung for it because there is resistance of blood flow into the lung circulation. So these disorders are characterized in the late stages with high blood pressure in the lung. Even COPD is a disorder like interstitial fibrosis, scleroderma, um, idiopathic uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. They all have an autoimmune basis as well even COPD. So that means that you have some genetic predisposition to get COPD. So it's not just you smoke or you have a secondhand smoke or other environmental exposures, but you are genetically programmed to be more sensitive to smoke. Okay? And what that causes is direct inflammation in the lung and then also your immune system and your immune cells that are always revved up and ready to attack bacteria and viruses and those kinds of things, get confused and attack the lung. Now, what other disease does that sound like? Graves disease or various forms of thyroid disease where your immune system gets confused and attacks tissue, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But what I want to tell you is these things that all these diseases have in common, inflammation, autoimmunity or a confused immune system lead to high pressures in the lung. It's the end stage of every lung disease. Okay? Now, the right side of the heart is what pushes blood into the lung circulation. So if there's resistance to blood flow in the lung circulation, then the right side has to do stuff, okay? And the first thing that happens is that the right side of the heart gets muscle that gets really thick, okay? And so say this is a person without end-stage COPD, they might have a right heart muscle about this thick, and as you get sicker, the blood pressure builds up in the lung circulation. There's a lot of resistance to blood flow from the right side of the heart. The right ventricle stretches, becomes thick, so that it's got kick power to push through the circulation. Over the long term, as we continue to struggle with chronic end-stage lung diseases, the right ventricle has tried so hard to push that blood into the lung circulation that it kind of stretches and dilates. Okay, so that is the end stage of most lung diseases, okay? Now, there are endocrine disorders that affect the lung. And so by endocrine, that's what I am. I'm not a pulmonary doctor. I don't take care of COPD, but I almost did a pulmonary critical care fellowship until I went to Iraq and saw more critical care than I ever want to see in my lifetime. Um, but as an endocrine doctor, what I take care of primarily are hormonal disorders. And the hormonal disorders that affect the lung are probably really threefold. The first is your reproductive status, your estrogen status. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. Um, the second is your thyroid status. 
And then the third is the most common disorder in the United States, and that's obesity. All right. So hormones modulate, affect, increase your risk for disease severity for any types of end-stage lung disease. My prior life was to study pulmonary hypertension and why folks might develop that relative to their hormone status. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about. And then, we'll, as I say, we'll save some time for direct questions about the thyroid because I love talking about that. And we'll, we'll go forward with that. Okay. So, um, so we talked a little bit about the background. Um, one of the things that I wanted to tell you guys is that we talked about this process of the right ventricle getting really thick and then over time it gets dilated and then you're really sick at the end. Well, there's also something else that happens at the end stage of lung disease, whether you have COPD, scleroderma, or whatever that is, and that is some remodeling of the blood vessels in the lung. Okay, and if you think of blood vessels, there is an inner line of blood vessels that is lined by a cell type called endothelial cells. On the outside of that is muscle. As your lungs get more sick, you get thicker muscle layers in the lung circulation that causes the blood vessels to squeeze, okay? And then also, there is something that happens to the inner lining of the blood vessels where the endothelial step cells that should be just a thin layer around the inside start to heap up and grow inward. Okay? And eventually, obstruction to blood flow High blood pressure in the lung results because you got a bunch of endothelial cells inside the blood vessels and a lot of muscle squeezing down. Okay? So there's some things that are important. And the first is if somebody were to make a guess, just looking at the <coughs> folks in the audience here, if we take COPD out of the picture and we look at all of the other chronic lung processes, do they occur more often in men or women? <coughs> Women, like to what degree do you think? Three to one, four to one, all right? So what's special about women? It's the hormones. Okay, and what hormone in particular is special about women? Yes, do men make it? No. Men make a little estrogen. The testosterone that you make gets converted to estrogen. The more fat you have around your belly, the more your testosterone gets converted to estrogen. Okay, so because we know this process exists and we know that women are more likely to get every type of lung disease and we know women have a whole lot more estrogen than men, we began to wonder whether estrogen plays a role in the development of lung disease. So several years ago, I had a National Institutes of Health grant to go to the Pulmonary Hypertension Association meeting. If you guys ever get a chance to go, you should. And I set up shop, took blood, and also did an extensive questionnaire with the participants of the meeting to try to get to this idea that estrogen might have a role in the development of lung diseases and the worsening of lung diseases and the progression to end-stage lung. And so I ask questions like, were you ever on oral contraceptives? Were you ever on hormone replacement therapy? Did you go a long time without conceiving children, which means you have a long, <coughs> lot more estrogen exposure. When you get pregnant, your estrogen levels actually drop down. Um, and so the questions we asked were to try to figure out whether women who develop lung disease had high rates of ever having used estrogen therapy in the past. And what do you think the rates were? Astronomical. Like 80% of women in our group 
had used either oral contraceptive therapy or hormones in the past. How many women in this room used oral contraceptives in their lifetime or hormone replacement therapy? So that's probably 80% of the group. Don't, okay. don't the majority of women end up taking oral contraceptives and yep. hormone replacement? Let, let me tell you what's unique about it. What's very unique about that? That's a really good question. That's a really smart question. So what's, what do you think the average age is here? 75. So, okay, so we have a slightly <laughs> older group. We have a slightly older group. Do you think hormones were different when they took them? Even yes. for hormone replacement therapy, yes. different than yes. they are now. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, one of the things I want to back up, and then I'm going to get right back to that. Some of this interest about estrogens in women and why women get more lung disease is because if you give blood vessels lots of estrogens, it drives the development of those blood cells, okay? If you give estrogen to women who have autoimmune disease or asthma, it makes the blood vessels more twitchy, and we don't understand. So estrogen drives what? several bad processes in the lung. And the hormone replacement that was used 15, 20 years ago in the oral contraceptive pills were made from horse urine. Female horse urine. Now I'm going to take this to another level, which is even you guys are really smart. A little bit louder. Okay. You guys are really smart, so I'm going to take it to another level. So, in my research, most women had greater than 10 years cumulative exposure to oral contraceptive pills or hormone replacement. Greater than 10 years. Every, almost every bad process in the lung appears to be driven by estrogen. See, oral contraceptives and um, hormones that were used 20, 25 years ago were made from horse mare urine. That was a different type of estrogen. Do you think it was more potent an estrogen or less potent? More. more. Absolutely. So when you make your own estrogen, or I give it to you as an endocrinologist, you break it down. Your body has a system to break it down. Okay. Otherwise, everybody would make blood clots because estrogen makes blood clots, right? So the machinery, the cells that you had that break down um, estrogen, break it down into really weak compounds and really strong compounds, okay? So the degree to which your body naturally breaks down estrogen likely sets your estrogen tone, all right? You might be a high tone estrogen person. And if you are, you would be the person who would probably have a blood clot the first couple of months on oral contraceptive. So that's genetic. You can't do anything about that machinery that breaks down your estrogen. The roll of the dice of your genes gave you a certain profile. When we gave women oral contraceptive pills and hormone replacement 20 years ago, what about the factor five? factor five? So that's a, another issue. So factor five Leiden, which is an autoimmune disease, it's can be made blood. can be made very can be made much worse. Your risk for clot that's right. when you're on estrogen Absolutely. is really high. In fact, you'd be contraindicated to take estrogen in my clinic. I wouldn't treat well, you. I was thinking about the birth control pills. Yeah, still very risky.